All right. Welcome back. Thank you for sitting through that break with me. Uh, if you are just tuning in, uh, we just finished talking about, in our first segment, the NFL free agency frenzy. Uh, I guess not free agency, franchise tag. I'm sorry, my brain is all scrambled today. Uh, the franchise tag frenzy, the franchise tag deadline for the NFL is today. Uh, so everyone that needed to get franchise tagged got franchise tagged or did not get franchise tagged today. We talked a little bit about that Uh and we just finished talking about Russell Wilson and the shockwaves, that that is going to cause throughout the league what that means for the Broncos in specific, where uh, Russell Wilson might end up. Uh, in this segment, we're going to uh, recap the NFL Combine. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, some risers, fallers, the big storylines that are coming out of the NFL Combine, uh, and uh, and yeah, the 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 summary of the NFL Combine for you. But before we get into it, remember that if you would like to be a bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net, uh, leave a tip or donation. Again, that link is gsmcpodcast.net. Uh, you can leave a message. It'll scroll. It'll pop up on the bottom of the screen there. We'll have a little discussion about what you had to say for me, you, and everyone watching to see. Uh, we appreciate you anything you can give. We appreciate you watching. Again, that link is gsmcpodcast.net. But like I was saying, in this segment, we are going to talk about the NFL Combine, uh, some results of that, some of the big risers, big fallers, uh, and the big storylines coming out of it. And I want to start with everyone's favorite event, the 40-yard dash. The big, flashy event in the NFL Combine. Uh, we had a big story with it in this NFL, in, the, in this Combine this year. Uh, Xavier Worthy, the uh, wide receiver out of Texas, broke the NFL Combine record 40 times. Uh, that was set by John Ross, if you remember, about seven or eight years ago. Uh, he ran a 4-2-1. Uh, 4-2-1-40 is insane. Uh, that speed that he developed, speed kills on a football field, uh, which is why the 40 time, which is why the 40 in the NFL Combine gets all the hype, because it's the it's the really the simplest one to understand how it translates to football. Uh, speed wins any matchup. Speed kills any matchup. Um, but what you don't want to do, and with Worthy in particularly. Um, I've heard this discussion a lot, is remember, just because he runs fast doesn't mean he should jump up your board. And that's that's the word of caution that I want to start this off with. He just broke the NFL Combine record for the 40 time. And the last time that happened, John Ross did it, and he had this huge jump. I believe he went like 12th overall to the Cincinnati Bengals that year. And we all know how that turned out for the Bengals. He was out of the league in five. He was off the Bengals sooner than that. Uh, it just was never there. He never was able to put it together. And aside from that speed, Xavier Worthy has a couple other issues in his game. He's still got some drop issues, which you can run as fast as you want, but if you're not catching the ball, it won't matter. You know, uh, He's got some separation issues, which, again, if he's running in a straight line, he's going he's gonna to get past you. But his route running could use a little bit of work, uh, and he's not really one of those top, top tier prospects. Heading in, he was projected to go, I believe, somewhere between the second and the fourth round. Uh, and after that, honestly, his stock rose. It's impossible for your stock not to rise after breaking a combine record, especially in something as public as the uh, NFL, as, as the 40, the 40 yard dash. Um, so his stock rose. I could, I could see him going as high as thirty-two to the Chiefs. Um, now I don't think he's going to go any higher than that, but I think he might have snuck his way into the first round, um, if not definitely into at least the third. It's hard to ignore it when you start getting into day two, especially day three. It's hard to ignore that speed. Um, I don't think he gets past day two after that, which is great. Um, but as far as making him a first-rounder, I'm not ready to go that far yet. Uh, the other big story in the NFL Combine that 
that I've been following, at least outside of, uh, at least that's come out of it, that's continued to be talked about for the last couple days, has to do, again, with Caleb Williams. Obviously, Caleb Williams is the is the guy in this draft. He's touted as one of the best prospects in NFL history. I'm not ready to go that far. I think he's a great prospect. I think what he can do, we just talked about uh, how when Russell Wilson's uh, creation ability kind of went away, he kind of fell off that cliff that we've seen him fall off of. He ha- he has a very similar uh, creation ability to Patrick Mahomes in the pocket, uh, and his arm talent is incredible. Uh, and whenever you're getting any kind of comparisons to Patrick Mahomes, it's a it's a great it's a great conversation to be in. But if you watch what he does, it's not necessarily scrambling, although he does have the ability to scramble as well. Not quite an elite level, but it's more avoiding defense, staying in the pocket. It's more uh, extending plays while still having the threat of throwing the ball, which is a which is something that Lamar Jackson really did this season helped him secure his second MVP. Instead of running as much as he normally does, he changed his uh, elusiveness into staying behind the line of scrimmage and looking downfield, and that's how he was able to really make that huge jump that we've seen him make and right back into that MVP winner for the second time. Uh, so Caleb Williams has a lot of that already. Uh, he has... That's, that's one of the most important things you look for, especially with a bad offensive line like he's going to get when he gets to the NFL, especially if he goes, when he goes in the top two, uh, he's either going to go to the Bears or the Commanders or a team that trades up to one. Uh, But either way, they're not going to have a great offensive line. So that ability to escape danger, to stay in the pocket, keep your eyes downfield, is something that's going to be really important and something that, regardless of the level, translates, you know, um, the ability to stay calm under pressure and make those throws is something that's really important. You see sometimes quarterbacks in college run with their uh, run around in the backfield like a chicken without their head. Uh, and that's not going to translate. But if you, if you have a, a guy, like you watch Caleb Williams' tape, he is able to... It kind of looks crazy when he's running around, but he always knows what's happening downfield. He always is aware of what, where his wide receivers are and who's open, and that's the most important part. You're not just running around like crazy trying to get open, trying to find a place to make a throw, but that you're still controlling the game even when it looks like you're out of control. And that's what he brings, and that's why he's such a special prospect. Um, but the big, the big talk with him is that he didn't participate in any drills. And quite honestly, I don't get it. There are so many prospects that don't participate in drills. You know, Drake May didn't participate in drills. Jaden Daniels didn't participate in drills. That's just this year. He's not the he's not the only quarterback that didn't at the top of this draft class, and we've been seeing it happen more and more in recent years. You know, uh, I believe uh, last year some of the top C.J. Stroud participated because he was not in. He was still being debated, but Bryce Young, I don't believe, participated. Uh, there's a lot of guys that, the, especially the highly touted ones, that have not been participating in these drafts, uh, in in on the draft, in the in the combine of recent years. Uh, so it's not necessarily a bad thing, and that's what I can't quite wrap my head around. Why everyone is freaking out that he is not participating, and they're not really even coming at him for what he does on the field. They're now coming at him for what he does off the field. Um, they're coming at him for uh, not having an agent. His dad now, his dad being being his agent, kind of, and asking for kind of asking for ownership in teams, which he's not going to get. Uh, asking for looking for ways around the CBA, which is kind of crazy, but that doesn't affect what he does on the field. You know, this is as much as you want a guy that you know, is the perfect prospect. Everything's perfect. Nothing, nothing at all. You're never going to have that. There's always something that's like, oh, but, uh, and Caleb Williams is no different, but the red flags that have been raised for him, they're not really that big a deal to me. Uh, From all reports inside 
the locker room with his teammates and his coaches at USC, even back to Oklahoma. He loves football. And really, as long as you love football and you're as good as football as he is, that's the most important thing. Uh, you know, if you love it, you're going to do everything you can to play. And he's keeping him on the field. He's, he's going to do everything he can to do that from all reports. Again, people are attacking his character. They're not really attacking his game, uh, which every single year there's a guy like that. And sometimes it's justified, sometimes it isn't. I think this year it isn't. I think people are trying to find negatives with Caleb Williams, honestly. I think a lot of people are grasping at straws at this point to try and find something wrong with him. Not that he really is this generational-type prospect that you cannot possibly miss on. I think there's been better, better prospects of late. I think Andrew Luck was a better prospect. I think uh, Peyton Manning was a better prospect. It might be arguable that Trevor Lawrence was a better prospect. I think he's about on that Trevor Lawrence tier. Again, a really, really, really great prospect, but not quite generational. So I'd be curious to hear what your thoughts are for Caleb Williams after the deadline, uh, or not the deadline, after the combine. There were a lot of mixed reports about him, but and I know as the as the draft cycle continues to go on, there's been more and more people that are like, should he go number one and overall? Uh, I don't think there's a world where he doesn't go number one overall. But I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. Um, but coming up in our next segment, we are going to be talking about transitioning out of the NFL, moving into the NBA. There is a uh, another team, the Washington Wizards, that are... Uh, on another big losing streak. Uh, we've seen something like this already happen once this season uh, with the Detroit Pistons. This one hasn't gotten quite as much coverage, but I am going to break it down, see if they could fight, break the record. They've already passed the Pistons for the worst record in the league now, something that if you told anyone in February, they would call you insane. Uh, but we'll talk about that uh, coming up in our next segment. Uh, thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in to this episode of Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. Uh, we will be right back. 